previously on the history of dark arts coffee. And I think like from that moment, like Talia was just like, that dude needs to work, like needs to be a part of dark arts coffee. It's um, funny because when I worked there, I remember seeing on my explore page on Instagram, dark arts coffee. And I was convinced like, I was like, these are, these are jokers. Like <laughs> these guys will suck. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. That's probably a good time to... Net, well, I've, I've kind of talked about dark arts up until the point in which we met. How did you start in coffee? I moved to London around the same time as you. I've been here 10 years. I was going to come down for two weeks. Where are you from? Scotland. We're in Scotland. <laughs> I'm from Inverness. Um, but I've been living in Glasgow. I came down to London to see Sin Vitus play. I'd met a guy a couple of years before that that I became friends with. I messaged him saying like, oh, I'm going down to London for this show, like, I think I'd stay with you. And he only had like a room and he's like, I've already got a friend uh, from his hometown staying with him. He's like, but I know some people who will like put you up, so like, let me double check and I ended up staying with like a bunch of his friends. So I met him off the bus station and then he like to me there has like, oh this is my mate Jamie, he's gonna stay for a couple of weeks, blah blah. Stay for a couple of weeks? Yeah. He just like took to your house and was like, hey bro, this is my friend, he's staying for a couple of weeks. What kind of house is this? <laughs> is this is this one of these houses where like people pay rent? Or is nah, this one of the <laughs> bro? <laughs> 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 so yeah, so I stayed in this squat for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And um, on my last day, I was like talking to one of the, the girls who lived there, and she was like, oh, "I hate you." I was like, "Yeah, I don't really like, don't really feel like going home." She was like, "Don't like, just stay. Like, we've got this sofa. You can stay." So you literally came down for a gig and then just. I did. I did go home. She said that, and I laughed about it. And I went home, and I'm day or two later, I messaged her, and I was like, "So remember that conversation? Did, was that? <laughs> did you did you mean that?" I took a month to like hand in my notice at the flat I was in in Glasgow, pack on my shit, figure everything out, and then I came down. And at that point, most of my experience was uh, managing bookshops. And then I came, yeah, I came down here and I was like applying for uh, like bookshops here. Oh, right. Uh, and wasn't getting anywhere and it was like six months and I didn't get a job. And one of the guys I was living with was working in a cafe on Chatsworth Road. He offered to show me how to make coffee. And I thought he was going to give me some training. Yeah. And I got there and he was like, you can't come behind the counter. I'm just, you can just watch me. <laughs> I said, like, what? He's like, just, just like watch. And I was like, and then I and then would idea. only make drinks when someone ordered as well. So I was just like waiting around for someone to order a latte. Then we went, I'm just going home and look at YouTube then. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had an interview lined up, a trial lined up at um, a place called The Modern Pantry in uh, Clerkenwell. So yeah, I trialed there and uh, <laughs> just lied in my CV. It's like, <laughs> it's like told them that I worked in a coffee shop in Glasgow that never existed, but I said it had closed down. <laughs> Gave a Glaswegian friend's phone number as a reference. She'd worked in a cafe, so I knew she could kind of like oh, shit. bullshit it through, no? Jesus. When, and it was kind of similar to you, where I just like went down there and just poured a couple of hearts and was like, oh, I'm sorry, like, I've not, I've not touched a coffee machine in a couple of years, I'm pretty rusty. <laughs> and the dude was just like, I mean, you obviously know what you're doing, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both got our start in coffee, just bullshitting our way through yeah. the interview. So you got the job? I got the job, yeah. I worked there two days a week for about a year. But the company was really nice. I didn't like the clientele. It was like, it wasn't like, well. yeah, like. Just like city boys. And just air, like loads of dudes sleezing on waitresses who need the tips, you know, you know that vibe? Yeah. Um, but uh, at the time I was living with the head mechanic from Blue Bomb the Hands. Uh. And so I went to visit her in her garage. She introduced me to one of the owners and this is Jamie, he makes coffee just down the road. Nice. And he said, oh, like, how's that? 
how do you like that? And I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not really enjoying it. So I did it like a, I went in a couple of days later and I did a trial shift for my half seven a.m. start at the other place. And I think uh, they yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they just liked that that I came in at like quarter seven in the morning to make a cup of coffees. Being on time or turning up early, not that like you expect people to turn up early, and I'm not saying this to anyone who works for us, that I expect you to turn up early, but for interviews... Doesn't hurt. Bro, it's like it's everything. <laughs> if you turn up late to an interview, you're fucked. Straight away. I think uh, so. You know, mm. I turned up an hour late to an interview once. And you still got the job? I, I didn't accept the job, but I got offered it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got pretty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> There's like fucking. What is, is it Dumbo's got the eyelashes? No, Snuffleupagus. Just, yeah. just sprinkle some of that on. <laughs> sprinkle some of that. Yeah. What was I saying? Yeah, so I worked at Lumon for a bit. Working there was great. Again, it's that thing of like, you get really into what you're doing. You want to like really learn the machinery, learn. For me, it was more about different because we had a guest espresso program. Every month or every couple of weeks we'd have a different roastery. Mm. And so that was what was interesting for me was like tasting the difference and how those were or like different origins and what was yeah. like good for espresso and not. Um, and then when I saw you? Yeah, at that point, I was with one of my best friends we were trying to run a cafe in the good basement of Goodhood. It was really difficult because we're in a basement. That place was so cool. I remember when I opened up, when I was, I was struggling to get the money to get Dark House off the ground, but I had all these ideas of what I wanted to do, and I think Commune at Goodhood, that was the name of the cafe, yeah. right? You guys started doing the cool branding cups, the like, it was just that you started doing the things that I was like, fuck, like, and it started feeling like shit, like, if this takes off and these guys do it well, I've lost that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've lost that like ability to be the first one in there kind of trying to do it. But after that, what were you doing after that? Um, when, when, the, when the cafe shut down, that was the, our last day was like the 23rd of December or something. And then after that, that's when you came to the interview. Yeah, <laughs> you'd sent me a message. And so had Danny from Clemson's. Oh, I like Danny. Yeah, he's great. But yeah, so <sighs> you, you, you and him had both text me within a week of each other asking me what are you doing what am i doing if i want to interview for a job yeah uh, and who's who's did you go to first uh i went to danny and i cycled straight from seeing danny to coming to see you so obviously i razzled and dazzled you uh, <laughs> i think no i think what did it was like we talked for a bit yeah and uh i I, th I felt like i was looking real smart i had like a, a notepad and pen with me I was like taking Did notes. You? Yeah. I can't remember it. I told you that I just interviewed at Clemson's, whatever, and you were like, yeah, cool, they're established. They've been around for however many years. Like, you take that job, you know you're going to be all right. You come work with me, three, six months down the line, we might fucking fail <laughs> and we'll both be out of the job. But yeah. if it doesn't, we can do what we fucking want. And like, yeah. you're here at the start and we can just like shape it together. And I was like, yeah, okay, I like that. I like how honest that was and also like, the opportunity there as well yeah and then i suppose like it wasn't that long after i guess that you started i realized i just hired somebody else who knew about as much about roasting than i did which was fuck all <laughs> <laughs> and i guess it was at that point it was like all right we need upskill quite quickly yes um there was a guy who i knew uh richard richard williams oh yeah um i knew him from nude espresso he was doing the um consultations yeah yeah roasting consultations so we, we booked him in to come down and um, spend a couple of days with us we cup coffees he gave us like a wealth of information in a very short space of time about everything yeah yeah he's great thank you very much uh, Richard um, <clears throat> it was very influential in, in getting us off the ground definitely yeah. um, and, it, and then I guess like we spent some time with him and um, that's kind of when the coffee just got a lot better quite quickly. Uh, so, after we kind of got to that point, that's when um, we opened I'll Kill Again. Yeah. We didn't open I'll Kill Again. No. <laughs> Talia opened I Will Kill Talia Again. Talia opened Kill, I Will Kill Again. Talia, um, my wife, she'd, she'd been running cafes um, 
in Melbourne and, and here in um, the UK for a long while. She'd gotten a bunch of cafes off the ground, um, and we we were actually looking for a site for something for her to run, right? Yeah. And we, we started looking around, but people just kept coming to the roastery. Look, yeah, like actually looking for a cup of coffee, and we kept just giving them bits of our batch brew. They were like, well, yeah. fucking now we have to make a new one because we're going to run out. <laughs> Yeah, and it kind of just got to the point where we were like, oh, fuck it, it's just open that. But like, yeah. to be honest, the story around I Will Kill Again, well, that might be best suited to, to get Talia and Rebecca, um, who's the, the mind behind the, the, the amazing Menu. food. Uh, we'll get them in at some point, they can chat about that. But building I Will Kill Again, that's when I met uh, Jacopo. Jacopo, here you go. Yeah. Nice segue, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Jacopo, we met. He's a great guy. He he like dealt in like vintage furniture. Most of the furniture, all the furniture that we originally had in the roastery was from him that we bought through him. Yeah, either bought through him or he built. Yeah, and then when we wanted to open the cafe, he jumped on board and built the cafe. Yeah, the bar, the back counter, everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah, and then we became. We had really good friends yeah. um, between Yakpo and um, his wife Maya. Yeah, Maya is Japanese. Yakpo's Italian, but they were living here in London, uh, and they had Momo. But Maya definitely, and I think Yakpo agreed that they wanted uh, Momo to go to school in Japan. Yeah. So they shut up shop here and moved out there, yeah. and then suddenly Yakpo needed a yeah. job. Yeah, he wants something to do out there. Yeah. Um, and that's when he reached out to us and was like, "Hey, like, because he'd been he'd been around like right from the start. Like, we've been like right from chatting about it before we'd started to when we started to setting up our cafe with us. So he was like, look, do, would you be interested in setting up a shop out there?' Um, we sat down with him. We we chatted about it. Um, it was I was kind of nervous about it. If I'm honest with you, at the start it was like it didn't. I was like. Well, you're a massive control freak, so that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to be you know, kind of in control of a lot of things, but at least with Yak Yakpo, I knew that he got what we were trying to do. Yeah. So, um, like most things that we've ever done in this business, we got drunk and we made a decision. <laughs> yeah, and then um, Dark House Coffee Japan was born. Um, we, we run it in sort of like a franchise type arrangement. So Yakpo and Maya have got autonomy to kind of do what they will and, and make decisions. Um, so it's definitely their business. Um, and we have constant open dialogue about, you know, ideas about what they want to do and what we want to do. And we try to, you know, push two boats in the same direction. So yeah, um, it's kind of it, isn't it? Thank you very much if you've managed to listen through the whole video. Um, we, we wanted to trial something different, just, you know, talk for a little bit longer and like give you guys some, a different look on what we're doing. Let us know how we do. <laughs> yeah, let us know how you went. Well, what but, do they say on YouTube? Sound off. Sound off in the comments. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you're forgetting, you're forgetting. We're still supposed to do a giveaway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got this giveaway. we got like um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could win. This opened beer. <laughs> uh, we've got some giveaways from um, our good friends at Brixton. Um, we've got a hat, a hat, a t-shirt, a shirt, and a hoodie. We thought it might be a little bit of a change for giving away brew gear. Um, we're going to give away like a nice little stack of clothes to um, someone. What are we um, going to do? What are we going to ask? What are we going to ask? Well. <laughs> I don't know if both of us would be sitting here if we didn't lie <laughs> in interviews nine years ago. Nine yeah, years. probably not. Probably yeah. not. No, yeah. I, I definitely know I wouldn't have, because then I wouldn't have worked for that place. I probably wouldn't have met my wife. So we're going on to time travel shit again. No, no, not time travel. Uh, alternative no. future, like change one thing and everything. What's it called? Like sliding doors? Oh, dude, don't. Yeah, it, it is. It's that, yeah. But let's not talk <laughs> that. No, no right, so. Yeah. What's Ooh. the worst lie you ever told? The worst lie? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I like that, I like that. What's the worst lie you've ever told? This could be anonymous as fuck too. Yeah, like... Go. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. Goodbye. Like, subscribe.